This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Secret Square. Could it be Bob Denver, Karen Valentine, Walt, the cast of Soap, Henry Winkler, Mr. Ed and Wilbur, Marty J. Wiley, Mark Smithbauer, and in the center square, Wilbur Neal. All on the new... There's Tuesday at 6, Wednesday's at 10, Thursday's at 3. That Darren Pamela Ferdin, um... Oh, no, not another Burgess Meredith show. Um... Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. The world of 60s and 70s television. Welcome to Vast Wasteland. Welcome home. Welcome to Vast Wasteland, the video journal of 60s and 70s TV. I'm Mark Schmidbar along with Wilbert Neal and Marty Wiley. Well, we're going to talk about MTM shows, all of the fine Mary Tyler Moore production company shows, which uh, it's a big topic and it may, in fact, take, take us two episodes depending on how things go. But first off, before we jump into that, just want to tell you we're on uh, Tuesdays at 6. Wednesday, Wednesdays, not Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday to Dan. Wednesday to Dan. We're working with him. We're working with him. I'm going to uh, <laughs> classes and stuff for that. Okay. And Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV Cable 21. Talk to your psychiatrist about your Wednesday phobia. Yeah. <laughs> also, if you want to write to us, you want to write to Box 151411, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. And here it is. Ooh. And also, before we jump into the big show, we want to show you the new backdrop. Yes, you've been waiting for it for who knows how long, and darn it, it's finally ready. Here it is. The big unveiling. Here it comes. <laughs> Wilbert. <laughs> and here he comes. First off, I just want to say I'm not an artist. I just do artistic things. <laughs> I hope they don't revoke ooh, your degree. Ooh, ooh. Here it comes. <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, here uh -oh. comes the light. <laughs> well, I don't want attention to that band behind the curtain. <laughs> here it comes. <laughs> An exciting moment in television history. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, yes. There it is, folks. The new, the new logo, yeah. I also want to say this is like a, a continuing process. And <laughs> it can only get better from here. 
<laughs> well, it's only got to get better from <laughs> here. Well, great. So you'll be seeing more of that new logo during the show. Well, well not in this one, but well, <laughs> <laughs> that's all you're going to see this time. Tonight's topic, the uh, Mary Tyler Moore shows, the MTM productions. The MTM universe. Yeah. Uh, certainly one of the most prolific as far as big, huge, hit, long-running uh, sitcoms. Um, I... I would be uh, hard pressed to find another company that just so consistently hits big hits, uh, with possibly the exception of maybe uh, Norman Lear. And but even he's had a lower, you know, hit. You know, he's uh, getting a better, uh, not as good a percentage I was gonna as say MCM. Like Desi Lu or something, but you know, well, they didn't do a lot. That's true. You know. <laughs> they just weren't as perky. Yeah, <laughs> that's the problem. Perkiness sells. Well, first off, the, the show that got it all rolling, the uh, the Mary Tyler Moore show, the, the, of course, the, comp the production company specifically designed for this show uh, to begin with. And what's interesting... Uh, Who when can turn the world on with a smile? That's right. Who can take a nothing day? And suddenly make, make it, it all seem worthwhile. worthwhile. Well, well, it's you, you girl. girl. <laughs> <laughs> At each glance at every little movement, you show it. <laughs> <laughs> that is all, is all around. <laughs> no need to waste it. You can have a towel. Why don't you take it? You might just make, make it, it after all. all. You're throw gonna that make it after all. <laughs> throw that, yeah, throw that darn hat in the air. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> when uh, when you look at this show, it's interesting. I mean, the the basic concept of a uh, of a single woman. Really, the first show to to uh, show a single woman in a fairly positive light, the idea that, that yes, you can be single and it's not a curse, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Don't you have the feeling that she had a dark past? <laughs> not much of one. Let's say a, a single There was always something that like, wasn't like, said. No, no children, you know. Just. Right. Well, she almost got married. I mean, at the very, the, the first episode shows that she just went to Minneapolis because she wanted to get out of this failed relationship. That she was, There's she something. was just about to get married, and what happened originally was she was going. <laughs> well, that she was going to get uh, the original concept. She was going to be a, di a divorcee, and CBS said you can't do that because the last time most people saw this actress, she was uh, Dick Van Dyke's wife, and they'll assume that Rob and Laura got divorced. <laughs> And Laura changed her name to Mary Richards, Richards and moved to Minneapolis. <laughs> exactly. Oh, oh, this protection program. <laughs> that means that Dick Van Dyke had done something terrible. Oh, something I would horrible. Up all something night obscenely terrible. It. Right. <laughs> well, this, this gives you an idea as to Give the thought some processes. Give me for having a break. The, the thought processes of CBS executives and, and, in fact, television executives in general to think that <laughs> this absurd concept. But anyways, so she's single and never been married. <laughs> That's the last second that was uh, going to change it around. And uh, really, you you can't find a show with a with a more, let's see, what's the word I'm looking for? Just a really well-balanced uh, ensemble cast. Uh, diverse. Diverse. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you had you had you had your your perky lead, <laughs> and then you had the gruff but lovable boss. And then you had the overbearing other guy at work. And then you had the wisecracking guy at work. <laughs> then you had the wisecracking girlfriend that lives in the same apartment building. And then you had the bitch on wheels. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you referring to Phyllis or Sue Ann? That's the question. Sue Ann Moore. Right. <laughs> Phyllis was, well. <laughs> kind of out there. Phyllis was just out Phyllis. There. Phyllis. <laughs> but that's another show. <laughs> right. And we'll get to that later. Just, just a minute. But, but first. <laughs> so, well, let me let me ask you this. Um, favorite Mary Tyler Moore episodes? <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, I mean, the, the first obvious one is the, the Chuckles is Dead episode. Yeah, I would say, uh, I, I would say that's one of, the, one of the classics where, where uh, well, it, if you were in Tibet in the last 20 years and haven't seen anything in syndication, you... Uh, uh, Chuckles the Clown, who worked at WJM, died in, a, in what turned out to be a very humorous way and uh, at, at the uh, 
all up to and lead, up, leading up to the funeral. There's all this uh, doom and gloom talk, and, and meanwhile, other people are being kind of uh, have, being kind of frivolous about it. And Mary's berating them for being so frivolous, and then she breaks up at the at the funeral, and everyone, and she's very embarrassed. And, yet, and when that's and that's really one of the major parts of the Mary Tyler Moore show is Mary Richards being embarrassed. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Put her in an embarrassing situation, and so she can just look embarrassed. That's one of the big things. <laughs> Every show has its hook, and this right. This there. that was the big hook. That and the fact is, every time she opened her closet door, she had a new. She had this closet that must have been the size of a small football field. Right, exactly. Because every time she opened the door and walked into it, she came out with new cl new clothes on. Right. Well, she got a really good deal on the apartment from Phyllis, apparently, and was able to spend most of her uh, budget on, on clothes. I guess well, maybe the previous tenant, like, left. Left, and it all happened to be the perfect size. I, I just thought her, tardis, or her closet was a TARDIS. Yeah. Just, go in and, just go anywhere and come out. And... Well, then, then, then you got, then you got uh, Lou Grant. Um, you get uh, the... Again, the gruff but lovable. I mean, in the first episode, uh, the the big line where he says uh, says to Mary, "You got spunk. <laughs> I hate spunk." <laughs> uh, what a big classic. No, well, they kind of portrayed him as a drinking man too. Right. Right. That I don't know. I always had a feeling that <laughs> this man had a perpetual hangover. That's why he was just so damn happy to be mm -hmm. there. <laughs> One one show I remember in particular is a show where they decide they want to to show the single scene. So they take live uh, cameras and all this down to a singles bar, and for some reason I don't remember exactly. No one wanted to be seen at the singles bar, <laughs> right? And so nobody's there, and they basically have allotted like something like half an hour on the air, their entire newscast to this singles bar, and there's nobody there. <laughs> and, it's, and it's just kind of like the, the, the regular cast is kind of standing around at the bar, uh, trying desperately to, to fill airtime. <laughs> mm. Kind of like us. But, <laughs> let's see. Um, Isn't that like where Cheers got its start or something? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> anyway, let's see. Um, just a observation. Any, and, can you think of any, um... Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like the, the crisis that Phyllis was always be having a crisis because she didn't know how to parent right. her little daughter, right. Bess. And she was just always running up to Mary like Mary would know, like Mary would know what to do. Right. Having no children, of course Mary would know just what to do. Of course. <laughs> And something that uh, I've, one of the books I was reading about this uh, goes a lot into is the the un unconsummated relationship between Mary and Lou. Okay. Now, now I never really saw this, but this guy goes on and on and on about it. The idea that that you know. That was the only true relationship, and there was this romance between the two of them we just never saw. And they oh never. Oh boy, it was well hidden. It was, <laughs> it was so well hidden that most people were like, What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I, Isn't, that, that, well, I, was only I just 10. wanted to ask, did, did you guys see that at all? I, I think that kind of falls under the category of uh, get a life, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Stop trying to read these yeah. uh, these great sitcom, these great Freudian it. things <laughs> into, into the background here. It's just a sitcom, just a half-hour sitcom. You don't have to try to make a life experience out of it. And gee, what did he say was the relationship between Ted and Lou? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Hello, Ted. Hello, oh, Mayor. Lou. <laughs> oh, Lou. <laughs> so. Was he like the biggest jerk on TV at the time or I not? I think he Pretty was, much. but he was, he was a lovable jerk. Yeah. You know, he's, he's so jerky that you you, you got to love him. You know, it's, no, that's, know. that's basically the idea there. <laughs> one, uh, Ted reminds me that the, the one episode where um, they decide to enroll in this writing class. Well, Mary's enrolling in this writing class, and Ted decides to go too. And he's walking around like a smoking jacket in a pipe, trying to act like the writer person. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it turns out that he has he has blown off this big assignment, and Mary confides in him what his what her story is going to be, and he c just steals the story completely outright, and then reads it first in the class before she can. 
<laughs> and Mary berates them in front of the whole class, <laughs> basically. Well, did you want to smack Rhoda or what? Yeah, you did, after a while. <laughs> I, and they did. <laughs> Get her off of the show. Hi, so much. I'm the neighbor who has no self-esteem and no self-confidence. Uh, and Mary's so much prettier and right. I'm so fat. fat. I'm like, Rhoda's <laughs> fat. You know, that was one thing that occurred to me. Rhoda's fat. Yeah. <laughs> Never saw that. It, it's just, oh, <laughs> man, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> Get out of my apartment. <laughs> and they just shot her off that show on her own show. <laughs> But we'll talk about that one after a while. <laughs> <laughs> but first. <laughs> oh, so then you, then you had Murray Slaughter. <laughs> uh, kind of like a, a holdover from the Dick Van Dyke show. Yeah. <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah, in fact, he, he did guest appearances on Dick Van Dyke. Um, and a uh, character just like the wisecracking writer type. Is, you know, it's, uh, is, is there to just... Uh, to slam down Ted whenever he gets a chance. I don't know. I thing. thought he was like the only normal person on the show. Well, to, to, to the most extent, yeah. Yeah. I say. Yeah. <laughs> he had the most normal life. You didn't really see a lot of Murray's life. You saw a little bit of it. You saw you saw his wife every once in a while, played by uh, Joyce Bulafont. But um, you know, you didn't really see a lot of his life. <laughs> But you he seems like the most normal person in right. the whole show. <laughs> right. <laughs> Are you talking most normal or most um, realistic? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, realistic, yeah. <clears throat> the only one with a brain, maybe. <laughs> one more episode that I remember particularly is a uh, is one they they did a lot of ones because it's in it's in Minneapolis. They did a lot of they're stuck at a snowstorm. They're stuck at the office. And, and Prince comes in and entertains them. <laughs> yeah. Oh no no. Oh. <laughs> Too early for them. Okay. Rock, I'd run into the 80s. That would happen. We're all 10 and 11 years old. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's true. Well, he was already performing. <laughs> Probably wasn't much taller than he is now. Right. That's true. His hair though, he had like hair from hell back then. <laughs> anyway. <Are> you there? <laughs> well, I've seen pictures. Of him. But this one of them was where. Everybody at the office was mad at each other, and there's and it was it was Thanksgiving, and they n none of them could leave. They were all going to go to to big Thanksgiving dinners mm -hmm. in various places. They could, nobody could leave the station, much less fly anywhere. And so they're stuck there. And Sue Ann comes up and announces that she's taping her Christmas show. So she has this huge Christmas dinner. And meanwhile, everyone is mad at each other. Uh, it, she had a Christmas of, dinner on Thanksgiving? Well, because you had to tape ahead. Okay. <laughs> so, so she's... Just like we do. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this was shot several years ago. <laughs> this, show, this show was actually dead in 1950. Yeah. Right. It's like yeah. 10 and 11 years right. old. <laughs> hard to believe. <laughs> Look, if I pull hard enough, this will just come around. <laughs> And they're mad at each other anyway, so they, they all sit down and, and, uh, and Sue Ann forces them to wear uh, like Christmas hats of the world and all this and, <laughs> and sing Christmas carols and, and finally they, they, all, uh, they all receive the spirit of Christmas and everything's wonderful, but, mm -hmm. but a particularly well-written episode. Anyway. Oh, I always thought Betty White was just really excellent Oh yeah. that character because, oh, yeah. I don't know, I guess... Everyone always thought of her. It was, she was, I guess it was surprising because she played such a, <laughs> a right. manipulative, nasty woman. And it was the first time she had done that on a show. Uh -huh. I mean, and really, since then, she hasn't really played that part. True, and she doesn't, and today, she doesn't um, look the part. Right. And she was so good at it. Right. She was well, so good at it's it. It's the thing of people liking to go in. I've always heard stars say they like to play a villain or a... a, a Against a, type. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, just a not nice person because they get to, they really get to act. Fun. They get to, they get <laughs> right. to have so much it's fun. It's not fun to be nice, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's just fun, fun to, to get out there and <laughs> kick people when they're down and everything. And they so. enjoy that immensely. If you talk to any actors, that's, they'll tell you their favorite parts were the parts where they got to be nasty. <laughs> well, anything else about Mary Tyler Moore's show? Well, I, I, I did like the way that Ted was always mispronouncing things like... <laughs> Arkansas or <laughs> things like that. He, he just amazed me. It was supposed to be Arkansas, but he looked at Arkansas. Yeah, he's, 
He had a lot of fun with it. Of course, the ironic way that the entire show ended was that because of mediocre ratings, everybody was fired except, except for Ted. Ted. <laughs> the main reason why they had the low ratings all these years, Ted. <laughs> He stayed, kind of showing really what uh, how television works. <laughs> well, you could say the the whole general the media circus or whatever you want to call it, and they'll say that about radio and everything else too. Right. <laughs> it just went crazy, yeah. Because first you had Rhoda. <laughs> Rhoda went to New York, and apparently she went to some. Well, see, she went see, back home. Right, and and and, and the Im the impression they gave on the show, although you didn't really see much physically different, that she went to a fat farm or something. And lost five hundred pounds. pounds. You never saw it on the show. <laughs> I, I think she lost about three pounds, but <laughs> she moved into an apartment. She didn't really look she, like we were saying before. She didn't look particularly overweight during the show, and she doesn't look particularly overweight during her own show. <laughs> but she she and she just became a total new woman. Right. And she moved into an apartment and had this fat, whiny sister right. <laughs> who had no self-esteem, had no self-confidence. You played the Rhoda part. <laughs> <laughs> she was like the understudy for Rhoda. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah, just she... moved in as, as Rhoda moved into the Mary Tyler Moore part. <laughs> yes. Rhoda's going to make it on her own. <laughs> <You know? laughs> her but Rhoda couldn't throw her hat. Right. <laughs> So throwing pounds away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but look who's where now. That's right. Julie Kavner. Kavner is now Marge Simpson. Simpson. That's right. That's right. And she's After, got hair from hell. Yeah. <laughs> After she did the like had that wonderful stint there on Tracy Ullman and we really got to see that little Brenda could act. Mm -hmm. She could do more than go run no, I need bad. a nose job. Uh, <laughs> Sure. I got a boyfriend who plays the accordion. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and then Rhoda got to get married and divorced. Right. <laughs> because they decided, you know, this... Uh, well, we couldn't, really do it, we couldn't do it with Mary Tyler Moore. Let's do it with Rhoda, because nobody really knows her. Yeah. <laughs> She's had married. no past. We'll yeah. do it with her. Yeah. <laughs> they got married, things didn't go well, and they got divorced. So they only had the divorcee. <laughs> and this was kind of the show that... Um, and this happened... Well, I say this still happens today on sitcoms that don't do particularly well. Although today, if a sitcom doesn't do particularly well, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's none of this. Well, we can still get some more out of it. <laughs> Rhoda's ratings never did really, really well, and each season she had a different job because <laughs> it's like, well, we've exhausted all the possibilities of that job, you know, all the comedic possibilities. Let's move around to another show, another mm -hmm. type of job. They've got the writer surgeon in the background who's yeah. saying, well, this didn't work. Okay, well, throw this piece out. Yeah. We'll add this in. <laughs> Saw it back up. Present it again. That's right. <laughs> you know what they could have thrown off that was really super irritating? Her mom. Nancy Walker! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I still don't like her. She, she could play one the character. The archetype of she the could play Jewish one mother. Character. That's the one character. <laughs> what, she's on, she's on, she's on. True Colors True now, color. and who's she playing? She's playing Rhoda's mom. <laughs> <laughs> what is Rhoda's mom doing on that True Colors show? I don't understand. Yeah. I don't get it. I, I, I can't stand Nancy Walker, <laughs> and I don't know why Rhoda ever put up with a mother like that. <laughs> now, now, one other thing that, that Rhoda did have, it was one of the first completely off-screen characters, Carlton, your doorman. Your man, Lorenzo Music. <laughs> this Garfield now. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, life goes on. Uh, what, what, what's Valerie Harper doing now? Oh, boy, not much after she <laughs> left that darn, uh, uh, what was it called? Hogan family oh, thing. Oh, that show. Well, remember, she was on that for a while yeah. before she left and Sandy Duncan came in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the whole brouhaha <laughs> about that. Another, yeah. Huh? <laughs> and then, you know, then, of course, you had Bellis. <laughs> now, this, this was a show that, it, even, even as a child, when I saw this come out as its own show, I said, this isn't going to work. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is too limited a character. <laughs> so sad. Forrest <laughs> Leachman is a fine actress. Unfortunately, this was no way you could have a lead character that was basically not likable. <laughs> <laughs> and they proved that with shows like Buffalo Bill later, that you just that the public just doesn't warm up to a show where people just can't oh, stand. Oh, but I liked that one. 
Well, yeah. I adored that one. But but the mainstream public just went, eh. Yeah, no, you, mainstream. Well, right. I don't know. Dabney Coleman, though, it seems like every time he plays a character, it's nasty. Funny. Right. It's not a likable character as far as it goes. Yeah. But people kind of warm to the fact that he is so unlikable. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, he's got that, that Drexel's class, which now has... Does that have anything to do with the class anymore? I don't think it does. I think they've completely dropped the whole class. Somewhat. Like you several you thousand might see um, <laughs> at the beginning, he might be in the class, but after that... They have some oh. horribly ugly children on that show. Yeah, they did, if I remember correctly. I can't correctly. just watch it. But anyway... <laughs> well, they had that problem child on there one night. Ooh, yeah. what a kid. <laughs> remember the, remember the one where... Oh, maybe you don't. <laughs> remember the one where Phyllis is... Okay, Phyllis is living with her dead husband's mother yeah. and father yes. with her daughter Beth. Girl Beth. Yes. <laughs> Who was that girl that played Beth? Lisa? Myerson? I don't know. She was on, she was on My World and Welcome to It or something Oh, that like kid. That. Yep. But well, there's the one where she's deciding to get married books. and oh, I Phyllis I can't here. deal with it. Phyllis, Phyllis couldn't deal with anything. Lisa Garretson. Lisa Garretson. Okay. Phyllis couldn't deal with anything. <laughs> get on my nerves. Right. Did she have the braces How'd on How did she get a job? Time? How did Phyllis get a job? And this was another show where every season she had a new job. <laughs> and she was only on like... I, th this three days. No, three seasons. This show was on the air for three seasons. What? Today, a show like that wouldn't have been on the air for four weeks. <laughs> Today, that show is on. <laughs> well, it's on... I have um, watched Phyllis in the past year. Only because well, it's, they, it's they on, have uh, it. How many channels? Yeah, but I mean, a new, a new show today. How many Central? <laughs> yeah. Of course, they're showing Rhoda, too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's the ha contingent. That they, they have some sort of contractual agreement. They have to show that, apparently. <laughs> they got it cheap. Yeah. yeah. Basically, that's it. They went to a... Well, <laughs> what's interesting about that is when Ha came out, they said, we're going to have shows like the Mary Tyler Moore show. They did. They had Rhoda and Phyllis. <laughs> Rhoda or mm. Mary Tyler Moore, Moore. too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the Bronx. <laughs> or whatever they were at. New York's New York. I don't know where we Escape around. from Minneapolis. <laughs> <laughs> Escape, Escape from, from Minneapolis. From Minneapolis. From Minneapolis. <laughs> I like that. Well, um, uh, believe it or not, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to put this sucker into two episodes. <laughs> Push your pause. Push button. your pause button. <laughs> for for the second episode, where we'll talk about WKRP and uh, what was it uh, that uh, Paul Sand and Friends and Lovers, which oh, wasn't wow. really long. Well, that's true. We forgot Lou Grant and Lou Grant yeah. and White Shadow, <laughs> and not to mention all of the um, AMTM stuff as we go into the 80s with St. Elsewhere and. Uh, and um, Hill Street Blues. Yeah. So we got tons <laughs> of stuff to talk about. Tons of so stuff. just put your button on pause and come back in two, two weeks. weeks. <laughs> your VCR can e easily stay in pause for two weeks. I think that's, uh, <laughs> it won't hurt the heads or anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Call the Museum of Broadcasting. Boy, this one's a keeper. Well, <laughs> <laughs> for all of us here at Vast Wasteland, we'll see you next time. Good night, everybody! Good evening, and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland.